Okay, welcome to the second section of reviewing uh, parallel line angles. This one we're going to talk about corresponding angles. So we're going to build on what we did yesterday, or the other video, and we're going to continue on and just add this one angle today. Um, I want you to look here. If I could basically take for a moment and cover this up, just like this. We'd have one line, two set, two lines, and they would have a set of vertical angles and some supplementary angles, and we could just solve it just like we did in the previous video. But we're going to do something different today. We're going to add an additional line. When you have two lines that are crossed by another line, the line that crosses both of those lines is called the transversal. Now it's possible for something to be a line, be one of the regular lines and a transversal, but we're going to look at some of the simpler drawings right now. The definition basically says that when we have a transversal, that the corresponding angles will be on the same side of the transversal, and they'll be on um, the same side of their respective lines. So if you look, this is in on the top of line A. It's also on the top of line B. I think it's a little easier to think of it this way. If you look at this little set of four angles right here, this is the upper right I'm sorry, upper left angle. And it is in the same position as this one on the next line down the transversal. So when I go down the transversal, this is in that same position. Kind of like your hand is in, your left hand is in the same position roughly as everybody else's left hand. And those would be called corresponding parts. Okay? Now, Here's actually a diagram showing all four sets of corresponding parts. These two correspond, the two down here, the two up here, and the two down here. I can put them all on one diagram, which is what we'll see in the next screen. But um, before I do that, let's see. Let's look here. Okay, so we just said basically they're in the same location. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, here I've marked them all on the same lines. So here's my blue ones, kind of purplish ones that are the same, my orange ones that are the same, the red ones that are the same, and the pink ones, which are corresponding. These little two arrows, just as a reminder, mean that they're parallel. So when the lines are parallel, something special happens. The corresponding angles become congruent or equal to each other. So like this angle is equal to this one. These, this angle is equal to this angle. And you can see that this, this one right here is not equal to this one, but, so get that kind of straight in your mind. The corresponding angles are equal, but not all the corresponding angles equal all the other corresponding angles, uh, sets. So, but I've, I've done this. These two are vertical, so these two are the same, and these two are the same. They're not corresponding but they are the same angle. So if you look at a set of parallel lines, there's actually only two angles. There's this angle and this angle repeated in different locations down the line. If you go around in a circle, it's like this angle A, angle B, angle A, angle B, and go down here and do it in the same order, angle A, angle B, angle A, angle B. Okay? And so this is the approach we're going to take. So here's a little review practice from um, yes, from the last video. How do I find these angles? Well, this one, number 6, is vertical to the other one that has 83 degrees. These are vertical, these two. And so angle 6 just equals 83. Why? Because it's vertical to the angle 83 degrees, whatever that one is called. Now, this one is supplementary to the 83. So my calculation is what is 180 minus 83? That looks like it's going to be 97. So I know that this one, I'm going to let the calculation over there stand, but it's 93. I'm sorry, 97. And the reason is it's supplementary to angle uh, let's say to angle 6. That'll make it a little easier to write. And this one right here is also 97 because it is vertical to 
angle 5. Now there's other reasons you could put for some of these, but um, that, that's just one. Almost any one here could be either vertical to some angle or supplementary to some angle. So I want you to notice that I like to write my angles on here. You should do that. It's going to help you. Everyone whose quiz I looked at who did that had a much better chance of actually getting the questions right. Now here is our little guided practice. I'm going to show you how to do this one. And then I'm going to basically ask you to do the next one. Next two. Okay, I'm going to make a little box here. A little oval on it. I'm going to cover this up for a moment because if it helps you to put it, your paper over it or something, do that. We're just going to look at these four. Well, that's the same as this kind of problem up here. And I know how to do that. So I'm going to use some colors. This is going to be my 137. This is also going to be 137. Why? Because it's vertical to the uh, angle I was given, to the uh, angle that's measured 137 degrees. Okay. Now the other angles are going to be supplementary, so I'm just going to calculate them. This angle has to be supplementary to this whole angle here, so it's going to be 137 from 180. 3, 7 minus 3 is 4, so it's going to be a 43 degree angle. This one is also going to be 43. So 8 and 9 are 43 degrees. And that is because, let's see, I did 8 first. So that one was supplementary to angle, let's say 10. That will be easier because it, if you look, these are supplementary and these are supplementary. And then this is vertical to angle eight. Okay, now I'm going to use what I know about corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent and so if I could take this same set it's going to repeat around this um, next parallel line. Now if you've got a bunch of lines going on there be careful because what I want you to do so I want you to look here. If I go down, since the next parallel line is down, I'm going to go down the transversal until I get to the next parallel line. Well, which angle corresponds to 11? Well, the angle that corresponds to 11 is 137 right here. So angle 11 right here is going to be 137. It helps to draw your pictures big. As you notice, my pictures are not big. And so, um, I have to write my angles really small. It's corresponding to, what was that, angle 137. Okay, now all of these are actually going to be corresponding to something. We just have to figure out which ones. 12, let's do 14. It's vertical, so I already know it's going to be 137, but it corresponds to angle 10. So well, let's see, 14 is 137. It corresponds to angle 10. Okay, write 137 there. And let's see, angle 12 right here corresponds to angle 8. So it's going to be 43. If you take a moment and pause after I finish this, you will see that corresponding, let's see, 12 was corresponding to angle 8 and 13 was corresponding to angle 9. You'll see that basically you've got the same pattern around your four, uh, your four angles going down your transversal. But the key is don't switch from one transversal to another. Just go down the same transversal and as long as you just have parallel lines crossing That'll work fine. If you have others, you can kind of just skip them and go to the ones that are parallel and put them in and then use some other way, means of calculation for the others if you need to. Okay, that is all for this video. You need to work 
these on your own the same way we work the other one. 